Well, some major developments in Ukraine today. The government there now vowing to prosecute two men, it claims, are elite Russian soldiers captured while fighting in eastern Ukraine. Russia's defense ministry has reportedly identified them as former Russian servicemen, but it's unclear when they left active duty, according to that department. Russian President Vladimir Putin has repeatedly denied the presence of Russian troops in Ukraine. Let's bring in Rick Rennell, former advisor to four U.S. ambassadors to the U.N. and a Fox News contributor. So, Rick, you say right under our nose, as the world's attention really is elsewhere, that Russia's behavior is actually getting worse in Ukraine. And this is an example of that. Why do you believe that? Well, look, you know, if you don't want wars to start, you have to be aggressive with diplomacy. And this is the perfect example of a situation that is spiraling out of control. Our sanctions, the United States and Europe, uh, European sanctions against Russia have not worked. We have seen Russia get more aggressive. We have uh, Putin now saying, his spokesman specifically saying that there are no Russian troops inside Ukraine, specifically in eastern Ukraine. That's a farce. We have video proof of, of these uh, Russian troops inside. The Russians have used excuses like, well, these soldiers are on vacation when they go into Ukraine, all, all the way up to just denying the fact that they're inside Ukraine. This is the classic example where the U.S. State Department needs to recognize that the situation is spiraling out of control. We should be able to walk and chew gum. I know we've got distractions in the Middle East. We've got issues with North Korea. But I'm concerned, Jenna, that this State Department and this NSC and this White House can't even chew gum. We are not focused on what's spiraling out of control between okay. Ukraine and so Russia. So let me ask you how you would deal with Vladimir Putin. For example, if I say, you know, my suit is purple and Rick, you say, no, it's red. And I'm like, Rick, no, it's, it's purple. The viewers can see it's purple. <laughs> and you say, actually, no, it's, I, it's red. That's sort of like what our conversation with Vladimir Putin in a very simple way. He's like, no, absolutely not. There's no one there. What are you talking about? I haven't seen the video. Yeah, that's not us. I mean, that's that's sort of the conversation. So how do you break through to someone like that? Well, I will. I'll give you three quick examples. One, I would immediately announce that our reset policy did not work and we're going back to the old policy. I think that sends a strong message. Secondly, I think what you have to do is uh, send a strong message to Putin by arming the Ukrainians. We need to come down on the side of more information, freedom, liberties, and that's the side of Ukraine. So uh, arming the Ukrainians is, is incredibly important right now. And then I think the other example is that when you have people like John Kerry's deputy, Victoria Nuland, Assistant Secretary of State for European Affairs, when she is in Russia like she was yesterday when this happens, she needs to issue a tough statement. She needs to be uh, at the forefront of diplomatic aggressiveness. She's not. So give John us an example Kerry of that. What would President that be? Obama is Because not. the New York Times had a great article over the weekend uh, from the correspondent in Moscow explaining that Kerry's visit last week to, to Russia was seen as a victory for Vladimir Putin and raised a lot of concerns about whether the Europeans are even with us if we want to renew sanctions. So when you say issue a tough statement and go back to old policy, what exactly would that look like? Well, I think we can ratchet up U.S. sanctions, announce that we uh, are doing U.S. sanctions alone. If the Europeans aren't going to join us, we can pressure them and shame the Europeans. But we have to lead. We have to step out and do it first. So we should increase U.S. sanctions. I think a statement that Victoria Nuland can make is a, a chastisement of the Russian policies. Let's start pointing out when they're shutting down free media. Let's start pointing out in a more aggressive way when they're involved inside Ukraine and then they say that they're not. Let's show pictures. You know, this administration is really good with hashtags. Why don't they start using mm. social media to actually show the pictures and get reporters to write and pressure them? I think you can also start by saying you're uninvited to certain events. When we have well, they were UN disinvited uh, to the issues G8. that are going on, we, right? could, we could have Samantha Power uh, immediately okay. call a Security Council meeting. The Russians may not show up. They may try to stop it. But let's start using dip diplomacy so, in an aggressive way. So let's talk, for example, about the, the hashtag, right, or using the pictures or just flooding the media with examples of, of Russia just disregarding, you know, inter international law. Why do you think that will shame Putin? Why do you think that would be effective compared to everything else we've been doing? 
Well, first of all, um, I think you're right that it probably won't shame Putin, but it certainly will shame the Europeans to do more. It will shame the UN to get more involved. Uh, look, I spent eight years at the UN. It takes a long time to get issues like Burma on the Security Council or issues like Ukraine, Russia. It is not going to happen overnight, but you have to start somewhere. You have to be aggressive and you have to build. I'm concerned that this administration has taken military action off the table in the Middle East, and now they're not even doing diplomacy when it comes to Ukraine and Russia. Hashtag aggressive diplomacy. Sounds like a good book title, too, <laughs> Rick. I'm just pointing it out there. Sounds like an interesting topic. So we look forward to more on that. Uh, but thank you, as always. It's an important story. We want to make sure we keep our eyes in that part of the world, and we appreciate your time, as always. Thanks Rick, thank for you very doing much. It, Jenna.